Hey folks, it's Tommy Frugal Prepper. Um, I did a couple takes on this last night in my last one. Actually, the file got corrupted. But I decided I'm going to kind of break this up into some multiple videos. And um, on my last little status update, I, I had some interest in people wanting to see some of like the electronics repairs that I do. Some of the fine electronics. And um, a lot of what I do is laptop uh, charging jack repairs. Like the... Let me pull one out here and show you. So it would be like the power jacks. These are the things that your charger plugs into and they solder onto the motherboard or sometimes a little separate board. Um, some of them are easy, um, which they just plug into the motherboard. So you just tear the laptop apart and plug them in. But a lot of them require some, you know, soldering skills to get them out. Um, so I thought I would kind of go through and just talk about first some of the tools that you're going to need and kind of give you an overview of how I kind of do this little. And it's not really a side business. It's just a way to make some extra money on the side. Um, and I kind of like it because... Um, you know, I can turn them down, too. You know, I always kind of leave myself in that position. If I'm just too busy, I'm like, I'm too busy. Um, but I try not to do that because I want to keep people coming back. Um, you know, I always have lots of, uh, you know, there's a laptop there, another one down over there, and there's ball canning boxes. Um, there's one over here that's just now finished. Um, and, you know, I've got... Um, well, let's see. Another one back here in the plastic bin that's all in pieces that's got to be put back together. So, um, but I do, um, you know, typically see another one, and I've got another one I'm waiting on parts for out in the living room. Um, so, some of the things you're going to need, first of all, is you're going to have to be able to do some soldering. Now, let me grab some of my other soldering iron too. I should have got these out ahead of time. Um, I have quite the collection. I have quite a collection of soldering irons. Okay. Now, you may choose to just get one really nice soldering station with a digital control that comes with all the different tips. That's an excellent idea if you got a couple hundred bucks. Um, but, you know, I've collected quite a few over the years. I typically buy good soldering irons, not just real cheap ones. Um, these are ECG soldering irons. Okay, now ECG, Philips, Magnifox, RCA, Sylvania, um, GE, anything that has a Sears brand name on it. Um is all made by Thompson Electronics. They're all the same company. ECG is more of the electronic components division of Thompson Electronics and like tools and repair stuff. Um, however, if you go to Radio Shack and buy a soldering iron, you are buying an ECG, except it will have, instead of the blue, it'll have a gray <laughs> uh, little thing here. Same same exact iron now. Even the butane torch, um, they have one that has a blue part here instead of a red part, and it is ECG. The tips and everything interchange with the ECG. Okay, so you know I have the, this is a 40 watt iron. This is a 60 watt iron that I recently acquired in case I need more heat, but I haven't actually had to fire it up and use it yet. Um. This is an iron I recently acquired for doing fine surface mount work, and this is a Weller. Um, it's a 25 watt, but it has the larger uh, area that you put your fingers on. It has three LEDs, bright LEDs that shine down on your work. Um, it's a very nice soldering iron. This is made in Mexico, not China. Um, you know, it's like it seems like when it comes to tools, just buy anything that's not made in China. 
Um, I don't know where this is made though. Uh, Taiwan. <laughs> okay, so Taiwan typically good tools um, that I found as far as soldering stuff. This is a solder sucker. This is actually a Radio Shack branded one. But you heat this up, you put it down on the part you want to get the solder off of, you squeeze the bulb, and you let it go. And that's how that works. Um, and then, you know, I also have um, my standby that just stays on the workbench is this Pros Kit. Pros Kit makes very good tools as well. Uh, they're made in Taiwan. Um, I've had this one for years. This is their economy soldering station. It has a 40 watt setting and then you put the switch up for 20 watts. It has different tips that come with it. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say it only has the one tip that came with it, but you can buy additional tips. This is a uh, flat, you know, tip, chisel tip. Here's another pointed tip if I wear that one out. Um, but this is probably just my good old standby iron that I use 90% of the time. Um, the other thing is butane irons. Um, now, this has the torch end on it now, and it becomes a little butane torch. Um, it's great for heating things up. Like if you want to get a jack out and you have to heat all the pins at once, you hold this a couple inches above your work and you take five, ten minutes to heat it up. Nice and slow. Until you just start to see that solder melt. And give the board a whack and that jack will pop right out of there. Um, uh, this is a very handy tool. This also has a soldering iron tip on it. Just like this. Um, but these little parts right here, they'll glow red hot and kind of shoot some flames out the side. If you're not careful when you're soldering on a fine board you'll burn it with one of those vent spots. You really have to be careful to kind of hold it straight up and watch what you're soldering around. Um, it does have a variable heat control. You can turn it up and down here. Um, but you'll get used to it after a while as to how hot you need it. That's all I can say. You don't really know how many watts that equates to. So if you're a noob with it, um, you may overheat some stuff, lift some pads off boards, that kind of thing. Um, but I also keep this iron in my go box, right? In my go toolkit, in case I do need to solder something when I'm out in the field. Um, what I can say is Velamin, Pros Kit, and Radio Shack seem to all make real good irons and stuff. Um, I think they're. I really like Pros Kit tools, and I really like Radio Shack tools. Um, but I also like Velamin, and I have some Velamin stuff. Um, what I can say is invest the money in some little bit better quality stuff that's not going to fail. I've had this little soldering station here since 1999, and I use it probably most of the time every day, but sometimes I probably use it, you know, just a few times a week but a lot of times it's on for a good part of the day especially when I had my shop there were days I just left it on all day um, and, you know normally what I'll do is is if it's sitting there idle kick it down to 20 watts keep it warm and then kick it up to 40 when I'm ready to do some soldering um, then you're gonna need some like tools like this now you can get if you know a dental hygienist they throw away all their little tools. Those make excellent tools for this too. I've used them before. Um, these are Pros Kit. And they're just different tools. They come with little brushes, um, different types of chisels and points. These are really great for cleaning out little solder holes where you might have some junk stuck in there when you're trying to get a component out. Just different shaped hooks and pieces. Uh, probably the one I use most often is this one when you've got a hole that just won't clean out like there's a little piece stuck in it I'll stick this down on there and give it a good jab and clean, knock that hole clean after you've heated it up and the solder's molten um, but I'd highly recommend this you can get a set of picks at Home Depot that come with like two or three in a pack that are pretty good too um, not quite as fine as these um, or 
dental hygienist tools are, are great as well because they throw those away every time they're done with them and you can still use them for stuff like this maybe just check with a dentist's office and ask or when you get your teeth cleaned ask if you can keep your tools um, some other things that you'll need I use this emery board um, there's a couple uses for this but the one I'll talk about right now is cleaning off the soldering iron tips so when they get kind of black and nothing will stick to them you can just take and rub them on the emery board <laughs> you know it's kind of hard to do one handed but you rub it on there and clean it off till it's shiny then you can retin it um, the other thing is a sponge um, I get these little soldering sponges at the electronics store but any sponge will pretty much work you know this is dry right now it dries out and kind of shrinks down and then I keep a bottle of H2O this is just here for wetting my sponge um, but you'll use that wet sponge to clean off your tip as you're soldering like so um, the other thing you're going to need is flux I just use this Radio Shack rosin soldering flux now MG Chemicals makes a liquid flux it's really great stuff However, after having tipped the bottle of it over on my workbench a couple of times, I decided to go with this stuff. Let me get this open here. Which is just a paste. It doesn't tip over. Um, and it works real good. And you can use that for two things. Like if you're trying to get your iron tinned up the first time, I usually take, dip it in, you know, stick it in a little flux and then put some solder on the end of it. And then after I do that, I'll clean it on the sponge um, but you can also take one of these brushes and put that on your work that you're going to solder um, to help the, it helps the solder flow and stick to the metal um, but you're going to need some flux make sure you get a rosin soldering flux acid soldering fluxes are for plumbing they will corrode circuit boards all flux is somewhat acidic so you don't want to leave it on your board you need to clean it off afterwards but the rosin is what you want for electronics work um, as far as solder I use two kinds basically this is the silver bearing Radio Shack solder um, the catalog number on this is 64-035 um, a roll of this lasts a long, long time. Um, it's a little expensive. I don't remember exactly how much. Um, but this is what you'll want for doing fine electronics work. You want this real, real fine solder. Okay. When you need to put a little bit more solder on something, you'll want to get a bigger solder. Um, this is mostly for like when I'm soldering wires and stuff. Um, and this is just a 6040 rosin core solder. It has rosin in the solder on this one. Um, this one does not have rosin in the solder. You have to put rosin on the part you're going to solder. So you have to put the flux on there. Okay. Um, but it's silver bearing. And the silver really helps with the flow and stick nice. Even when I'm doing it with this heavy solder, I'll still put a couple dabs of this silver bearing solder on. Because just like having any silver in the solder whatsoever helps change that alloy structure of the solder and makes it much stronger and flexible and good. Um, but I've found that Radio Shack solders are what I like the best. Um, I've used other brands, I just don't like them as well. Now, I have to say, you know, I've been soldering with Radio Shack solder since I was 10, so maybe I'm partial to it. Um, this is the soldering wick. You use this, you put this down on the part you want to remove solder from you heat this up and it actually wicks the solder up into this copper braid and then you just cut that copper braid off um, I got this at Radio Shack but I've used other brands and I think the soldering braid is the soldering braid any brand I've used they do um, you know Radio Shack only sells this one diameter if you get like the ECG stuff or, or the uh, MG chemical stuff um, they make it in all like different sizes and widths and stuff, but the Radio Shack seems stuff seems to work good for me. 
Um, this butane iron does just refill on the back with butane. You just go get you some butane lighter fuel. And you essentially stick that in. Oh, let me see if I can get this on camera with one hand. You would stick that right in the back there and push down and it will refill this. So I keep some butane around. Um, as far as other chemicals, I find that I need a few things. One is H2O for wetting the sponge. Nail polish remover, and I'll go in why you need this. Um, you need some type of a flux remover. And I like this super wash for cleaning surfaces really well before I solder them. But this will also remove flux pretty well. Um, but the flux remover does work better at removing flux than the super wash. Um, and these are both about 20 bucks a can. But I've had this can for three years. I've still got another can up there. Um, I have just got this can. Um, but I do have another small partial can of tech spray flux remover um, that's not even empty yet that I probably should be using first. Um, and I've had that smaller can for like three years. Um, the nail polish remover, this is for, especially when you're using the torch, a lot of times you will burn the board a little bit. Um, and you'll see when I do this, another thing you'll want to pick up if you're going to do uh, torch work on, on electronics is some aluminum, or I don't think it's aluminum, but some foil duct tape. Like real, like for taping up ducts, duct tape, right? This is the foil tape. Um, and you can tape this around what you're soldering to help deflect some of the heat off. And the sticky residue on the back will clean off with the flux remover just fine. Um, but sometimes when you're using this torch, you're still going to burn the areas around the board where you're removing the part, especially if it's a finicky one that you've had to heat up. This is the best thing i found for getting the burnt spots off of boards. Put some of this on a Q-tip or a paper towel. Um, you can also get chem tips and chem wipes. Um, I find that they're kind of expensive. And if I get a little bit of lint on my stuff, that's what the compressed air is for. So I don't buy the lint-free chem tips and Q-tips and or um, chem tips and chem wipes. Um, but this is about the best thing for getting those burnt spots off. Now, if you have a particularly stubborn one, I put a little nail polish remover on it. Acetone works equally as well, and this is mostly acetone. So if you want to buy a big, you know, gallon can of acetone at Home Depot, that's fine. Um, but then I'll put this down on there too, and I can just kind of give it a little scrub and help get those burnt marks out of the board. Um, the other thing is if you have a cracked board. Um, where it's cracked and you need to try to put bridges across to repair it this is really good the acetone and this will take off that conformal coating that's over top of most of the circuit boards and you can work down to the bare copper on both sides of that crack and solder a little bridge across the cracks to complete the circuit um, every once in a while when you pop a jack out it'll have a small piece to the side that cracks off and you have to I super glue that back on and put bridges across it. Um, but this, you know, that's basically the chemicals that I use for soldering and the tools I'm using for soldering. Um, and what I'll probably do now, uh, my next video is go through some of the hand tools and maybe even the multimeters that I use. And then when this jack comes in for the laptop I have waiting, I'll do a video on doing the actual jack replacement. Um, if you like this you know give it a thumbs up leave a comment tell me you like it i still plan to do other types of videos as well for prepping and i'll probably just create a separate playlist for these for those people who are interested i don't want to go to all the trouble of doing a whole nother uh youtube channel um just for this kind of stuff unless it really takes off and people love it i may move it to a separate channel i don't know maintaining one channel is hard enough who knows what Google's going to make me go through to do a second one. <laughs> I just figured out how to do the one with the Google Plus, you know. <laughs> anyway, this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Everybody be safe and have a good weekend.